Four generations of one family, their lives and causes reveal 150 years of American history. I'm John Adams. I am counsel to the accused. Wait there. You mean you've agreed to defend those murderers of our people? I have agreed to defend Captain Preston and his men. The jury will decide if they're murderers. But I will do anything under the law to secure their acquittal. Have you turned your coat to red, John? Of course not. I'm no friend to the Crown. But under the law, the accused men are allowed the counsel of their choice, and Preston and his men have chosen me. They must have a fair trial. John, of all the men I know in Boston, you have the least love for the English soldiers. Sam, we may call this killing a massacre in Boston, but the other colonies will say that Boston is in a state of anarchy, that mob rule holds sway here. Unless these soldiers are given a fair trial, we will lose all the outside support we've gained. We may need that support in any future conflict with the Crown. Mr. Adams, this way. John Adams, successful lawyer, subject of George III of England, firm believer in British law. Because of that belief, he has just taken a most unpopular case, the defense of a group of British soldiers accused of killing five men in an unarmed crowd. Boston citizenry, seething with resentment over presumed injustices by the British Crown and Parliament, call it a massacre. The soldiers call it self-defense. An unpopular case, a dangerous case, unwanted by John Adams, who has no sympathy for the defendants, but believes strongly in their right to a fair trial. He intends to see that they get it. Prisoners will hearken to the verdict as this court has recorded it. You have been found not guilty of murder by this jury and are discharged by this court herewith. All save Matthew Kilroy and Hugh Montgomery who have been found guilty of manslaughter. My lord, my clients pray for the benefit of clergy. Granted. Let them be taken forth to be branded on the thumbs so that they may never ask for mercy of this court again. The jury is dismissed with the thanks of this court. Court is now adjourned. All rise! Well done, Mr. Adams. You truly think so, Mr. Quincy? Indeed. A good day's work, I warrant. Two of our clients escaping with nothing more than burned thumbs to show for their ordeal, and six discharged as innocent. The sentence of death against those soldiers would have been a foul stain on John, the honor John, of the John, you've justice. convinced the jury of that fact. Don't squander your persuasive art on me. I use no art on that jury. Nothing more than facts and evidence. Mr. Adams, we've won our case. It's time to wish our clients well and go home. Wish them well? I wish the lot of them in hell. But you believe them innocent? Innocent of firing wantonly into a crowd, yes. But guilty of being British soldiers, sent here to enforce the Crown's will. Cold, Mr. Adams? Why not put on your red coat? I dare say it's warmer. It's lined with the King's gold. Stand aside. This court is reserved for patriots. Then it is open to me and my kinsmen. Come along, John. And I was only doing my duty. Yes, but is it necessary to do it so well? Never fear, the verdict will be forgotten in a month. All they'll remember will be those brutal soldiers who massacred the innocents on King Street. Sam Adams, you know damned well what happened. A Boston mob, drunk with whiskey and rebellion, attacked a lone British soldier before the customs house. That mob was... Shh. 
They will be remembered as martyrs, to be remembered whenever men speak of liberty. When will you learn mobs are not fit to rule kingdoms? But surely they can overthrow them. How dare they accuse you of supporting the crown? They are patriots, Mrs. Adams. What's a patriot, Papa? Mary, this is no time to ask your father questions. No, my dear, it is a fair question. It deserves a fair answer. Take equal quantities of civility, fear, fury, and gratitude. Add revenge, malice, envy. Infuse all this into the brains of a brutal, surly, ugly man. And there you have your patriot. But Mama told us you were the greatest patriot in Boston. Johnny Navi, you get ready for bed now. I have medicine for your mood, John. A new shipment of books arrived today from England. Right, more books? The law books you ordered. Oh. Oh, Cook's works. What's this? Two pounds? Oh, I must learn to borrow books like other lawyers. You are not other lawyers, John. No, they build estates while I mope about with plaguey books. Filling my head with useless bits of law. Mr. Adams, rest now. You have no cause to condemn yourself. You have done what your conscience demanded. Indeed, and we are the poorer for it. It is a grievous fault in me. John, you have no faults. Foibles, perhaps, but no faults. What foibles? Well, you will spy catastrophe in every event. Well, if I do, it is because it lurks there. Abigail, you have not seen what happens. Whenever I try to serve the people of this town, my wishes prove impotent, my efforts fruitless. We have struggled for years to make a life here. If we stay any longer, I shall be ruined. I shall sink into contempt and obscurity. You will perish for want. John, we prosper here. We may not be rich, but we do not owe any man. I shall die of Boston. Are you ill? Today in the court, I, I felt faint. I, I got on the street and I felt a stab in my chest. I could not get my breath. You must take to your bed at once. I'll send for the doctor. No, I want no doctor. I know my ailment. It is the bad air of Boston. Only my farm can cure me. Very well, then. We... We shall return to Braintree. Yeah, we're home. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>